everyone, this is Phoebe Wilde from Cardboard Vault and I'm here at Gen Con 50 talking to Jamie Stegmeier from Stonemeyer Games. How are you doing, Jamie? I'm doing great. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, well, thanks so much for, for talking to us today. Uh, you've got the very exciting Charterstone, one of the first production copies, well, the first production copy. First, yeah, first one. And uh, we're both, well, Mark and I are both very excited for this game. So can you tell us a little bit about Charterstone for people who might not be familiar with it? Sure. Yeah, it's a, uh, unlike Pandemic Legacy, which was a cooperative game, this is a competitive game, legacy game, for one to six players, where players are building a village together, but it's competitive. So you're controlling your own workers, your own part of the village. Yeah. And uh, what inspired you to create the game? I, I, I played Risk Legacy a few years ago, and I loved the element of permanence and, and discovery that, that comes out of those unlockable boxes and whatnot, and so I really wanted to design a legacy game of my own. It took me a couple years to come up with an idea that I really wanted to pursue, and uh, so really uh, Rob Davio really inspired me through his, his legacy concept. Uh, it's really interesting to me because a lot of the legacy games that are out there at the moment are uh, very um, combative mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, there's Pandemic Legacy, which is all about the diseases. You've got C4, which is all about, you know, pirates and aggression. And this is such a peaceful, like, village building game. I really love the sound of it. That was, I, I wanted to kind of make a, a slightly more family weight game. I thought, you know, all, there are these darker legacy games that I love, yeah. but I wanted something a little bit more light and cheery. Yeah. yeah. So... Originally, when I started talking about Charter Stone, I wasn't going to show anything in the box in advance. But then I found that people who are spending $70 on the game want to know a little bit. Everyone's very excited. They want to they see what's in there. Yeah, they're curious. Um, I'm not going to open the full board because this is one thing that I want players to experience together, together for the first time. But this gives you an idea of what the board looks like. It's colorful, but there isn't a lot on it. So they're, like the red player would control this charter on the board. And over the course of a 12-game campaign, that player will be placing permanent stickers mm -hmm. on these slots, and there'll be buildings that the red player or any player can place workers on. Yeah. Kind of like in Lords of Waterdeep, when you build buildings, and, and anyone can, can put their workers on those yeah. buildings. One of the major features of Charleston that I'm really excited about, and this is something I learned from some of the other legacy games, Risk Legacy in particular, and Pandemic, mm -hmm. is I wanted a really low barrier to entry. So I wanted players to be able to play that first game without going through like a 30-page rule book. And so the rule book of Charterstone is only four pages. Wow. Like, that's it. And as you can see, there are lots of holes in that rule book for players to fill in rules as they play the campaign. So it's really easy to get into that first game. Um, one other thing about Charterstone is that Stonemaier Games no longer uses Kickstarter. And so I wanted to find a way to still make make our games feel like deluxe versions of the games, even though we're not using Kickstarter. So this is, again, not a spoiler. This is stuff that you'll open from game one. So right out of the box, we, I just kind of went all out with <laughs> wood, and there are metal, lots of metal coins in every copy of the game. Um, and there's some other hidden stuff that I won't show. But I, I kind of wanted to have that deluxe feel. And for people who want uh, the even more deluxe version, I believe it's bro uh, Meeple Source have the deluxe meeples with the little characters on them as well. That's right, yeah. So uh, the meeples in Charterstone, like this is the blue player's box, they have this stuff. Uh, you have some tokens, uh, these are the Meeple Source ones. So these tokens come with the game, these little meeples, and Meeple Source has some fancier versions of them. I'll clean this up later. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and one of the interesting things, one of the other interesting things you've done with Charterstone is, unlike other legacy games where you play through the campaign and then you've got a box sitting around that you can't do anything with, Charterstone you can actually play with the full board after you finish the campaign. That's exactly right, yeah. You've essentially created your own unique worker placement game, um, so you can continue to play as much as you want. Or uh, there are a couple options after that. You can, not, you can stop playing, and if you want, you can take the metal coins and toss them in any <laughs> game you want. Or if you really enjoy the experience, you can flip over the board onto the back side. It's the same on both sides. And you can get the recharge pack, which uh, is something that our customer, uh, Charterstone fans, people who are interested in Charterstone, asked us to do this. Uh, that basically just replaces all of the components you permanently altered the first time you played. And so you can just play another 12-game campaign if you want. And you end up with essentially two unique boards then that you can play with on either side. Exactly. Was it difficult uh, managing the game so that whatever you end up with at the end is playable and is you know balanced and everything like that? That was that was a, a major challenge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, 
it, it's it's certainly possible that there will be some weird board that just doesn't <laughs> work all that well. But uh, because most of the ac- or all the actions are accessible by all players, even if you have an action space that doesn't seem all that useful anymore, there's there's a ton of other ones that will work. So I, it will be a challenge for someone to create a board that doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure the internet accepts that <laughs> yeah. challenge. I'm sure they'll manage it. Uh, so when can people expect Charterstone to be available and for them to be able to buy it? Well, in Australia, it will, should be available in early November. Mm-hmm. Um, in the US, it'll take a little bit longer. Uh, I'm hoping to get it in right before Thanksgiving week, but worst case scenario will be December 12th. And around the world, I'm kind of saying when people, when my distributors get it in, they can release it. Yeah. US will probably be the last release date. Awesome. And uh, what's the MSRP of the game as well? It's 70 US, which I think I've heard is what, like 120 Australian. I don't, need, I don't know if I need yeah. to make this Australian reference. You but don't have yeah. to. Okay, yeah. 70 USD. Yeah. <laughs> and 30 for, the recharge, 30 for the recharge pack? 30 for the recharge pack, yeah. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you so much for showing us the game. Oh, my pleasure. <laughs>